Hey guys, I'm Gerald from Tribal Arts Films and this is my debut tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be looking at how to create these cool vintage nebula star fields using Fusion in DaVinci Resolve Studio 16. Let's have a quick look at what we'll be creating today. Now the final render of this video can be found on our YouTube channel Tribal Arts Films and the link is in the description below. Before we begin, I'm assuming that you have already a basic knowledge of Fusion. Otherwise, you might get left behind as I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. This tutorial will be split into six different parts. This first part will be looking at how to generate fixed particle positions in 3D space using the P emitter and P friction nodes. So let's begin. First, we're going to go into our edit page, create our effects library, go into our toolbox and drag in a Fusion composition. We're going to press Command D and set its duration to 7 seconds. With that composition selected, we're now going to go and click on the Fusion tab, which will bring us to our Fusion workspace. Now what we'll do is create our particle emitter and our particle render node. All particle emitters and parameters should be in between the emitter and the P render node. Once you get to the P render node, the particles are in 3D space and can be and can interact with other 3D nodes such as the merge 3D node. Now we're going to have a look at what our particle emitter is doing in its default state. Let's zoom in. So it's a spherical emitter. We play. So you can see it's emitting. 10 particles every second. We don't want that, we just want a fixed number of particles. So to do that, we're going to go into our first frame and we're going to keyframe it to be, uh, let's just put in 50, so, so it emits 50 particles. And then in the next frame, we don't want to emit any more. So we've got a fixed number of particles in our 3D space. If we play that, but before we do, oh, this might be hard for you to see, I'm going to change our emitter style from point to blob and I'm going to bring the size down a bit. I just want you guys to see what's happening a bit better. And actually we're going to go into the region tab and we're going to increase the size of our sphere emitter. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's now play this. So you can see our emitter has just generated 50 which we've put into our parameter and in the next frame there's no more em emission of particles. So 50 is the fixed amount of particles become fixed amount of particles emitted. Now at around 100 frames you can see the particles are disappearing. That's because our P emitter lifespan is only 100 frames. So we want it to match our composition length, which is, if you look here, 167 frames. So let's increase our lifespan to 167. However, it's more safer for you to actually increase it to a bit more, because sometimes particles disappear a frame here and there. So we'll increase it to 180. And if we scroll through, you can see we have a fixed number of particles with the lifespan of our full composition. Okay, that's good. But I think we need to expand the particles a bit more and we need a bit more particles in our 3D space. So to do that, what we're going to do is increase our velocity. We're going to go to our particle emitter and increase our velocity. And let's see what happens. I'm going to increase the size again. I want you guys to see what's happening. Okay, if we play, you can see the particles are being emitted only in one direction. Whereas we want to be emitting particles in the whole 3D space. So we go back. Let's increase the velocity. I really want to push this velocity out. Because I just want as many particles in 3D space. 
what we'll do is we're going to change the angle of variance to 360. Let's see what that does. So yeah, it's emitting the particles out, but it's only emitting on along this x-axis plane and the y-axis. We also want to emit on our z-axis, front and back. So we'll go to our angle z variance, and we'll go 360 as well. Let's play that. Now you can see the particles are emitted out in 3D space. Let's increase the velocity so we really push them back. That's good. Now we, want, we don't want the particles to continually be moving out in space. We actually don't want them moving. We just want them at a certain frame like this frame to be fixed and to be positioned at that 3D spot so that we can get our camera in our 3D node and dolly through it. To do this, we're going to add a particle friction node. Shift space to bring up all our tools. P friction. There's a particle friction node. We put it in and let's have a look at what this does to our particles. You can see it slows it down. However, we want it to just at the moment it's taking some time to slow down whereas we want it to just to be fixed at a position straight from frame one so what we'll do is we'll go into our p friction node we'll bring the velocity down to zero and we'll keyframe that this means that we won't have any friction on the velocity on our first frame which means we're going to let our emitter just emit the particles first like that but then on the next frame we're going to pause all the particles and freeze them in their exact position and what we're going to do is we're going to enter the parameter one and one will freeze the particles so let's have a look at what happens there you go you can see particles are frozen however because we're at the start of our frame we don't give enough space for our emitter to expand the particles or give the particles enough velocity to expand into space and then freeze them. To fix this, what we'll do is we'll go into P renderer and we will pre-generate frames before our first frame so that we can start straight away on an expanded particle system that we've used velocity to expand into a space. So let's pre-generate some frames. Right out. There we go. So we've just pre-generated frames and you can see it's all over the place. Let's bring it down and let's also bring the amount that we're expanding, that we're emitting out down to maybe eight. There we go. I think that's a good amount of particles and enough space for us to get our camera movement through. Let's play that. Yep, everything's fixed and expanded out. We're gonna just do some random seeds on this just to get some variance with our particle systems, just to get some different positions that I might like. Okay, I think that's good. That's going to conclude this tutorial where we've generated fixed particle positions in 3D space using the P emitter and P friction nodes. Now it's ready for us in our next tutorial to create camera movements using the 3D camera node and the merge 3D node. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you like what you've seen, then subscribe to our channel, Tribal Arts Films, and hit the notification button to be notified of more tutorials coming up. Thank you.